bid you good day. With so many spending their days and hours considering recent events, as well as events of the past, it seems an appropriate moment to also then consider the present and the near future. This day, then, we will explore the concept of organic chemistry or organic technology as humanity begins to move into a different stage of its creativity, somewhat for necessity and somewhat for its own basis in creativity as well. Humanity is a fully formed organism in terms of how it has been created, how it continues to create and evolve itself, and its future. In other words, humanity is a complete or near complete being. It is fully formed in its ideas. It has become or extended itself in as many different ways as it has originally conceived. And so at this particular stage, at the near dawn of a new age, new possibilities can be considered for how humanity wishes to express itself in the near and new age. What we are discussing here then is how humanity will evolve not only its mind, its ability to conceive or to think, as well as to create itself and all that it believes is part of its world. Now, if humanity is a complete organism, a complete thought, then, in essence, it has extended itself fully. This means that the near or next generation will already begin to have new concepts and ideas of what to do with and for life. If you will begin to examine life around you, you will see that in many ways it has become complacent. There are advances. Most of the advances that you see in this time are in the order of technology. Humanity is and has always been interested in the smaller and larger gadgets that will lead to its well-being, to its comfort, to its creativity. Now, the level of creative comforts that it has made for itself to entertain itself, to communicate with and for itself, have made it so that in many ways life is simpler, even if it seems more complicated in an everyday sense. The gadgets that you have then automate life to some degree so that you do not need to work as much. Many of your manufacturing abilities then have robotic arms, robotic means of creating or automating many of those necessities of life so that it is not human labor that is necessary. This frees up humanity to do or to explore other means, but it has not quite done so yet. You see, in some ways, humanity is finding itself redundant. Look about you. It is not so much that the economies of the world are rather depressed at the moment. It is also that technology has made many human work projects less necessary. Those particularly involving physical work or physical labor become more able to be handled by the technology that humanity itself has created. In some ways humanity has created itself out of many jobs. And so now it must look for new means of creativity for itself, and, in fact, it is doing just that. 
it is doing so by means then of organic chemistry by means of life creating life so here you have now humanity itself creating other compounds other organic materials and combining these with the technologies that you have available to you now and with others that are being created in many of your well secret laboratories we could call it that in essence what you would call the science the technology of cybernetics now comes to the surface now comes to a point of acceleration so that you will have its use at your fingertips cybernetics then allows that which is organic material to be technologically organized in such a way that its robotic or automatic nature can be expressed organically another way to say this is life imitating life or humanity creating life or at least organizing the components that lead to life now as long as humanity has viewed this as supporting its creature comforts well it has been rather welcome after all your robots look like robots your robotic arms in manufacturing look like robotic arms that is well and good now i ask you to consider what it will be like when robots begin to look an awful lot like you when they begin to move a little bit more fluidly as you do when their thoughts rather than being programmed one at a time simply to produce a certain outcome begin to also be a little bit more fluid so that although they are not quite thinking for themselves they begin to think of so many different possibilities eventualities and ideas that in essence they have more of these stored within them and available to be recited in the moment than you do now here you have life creating life which is not exactly life but in some ways works a little bit better than organic living life well that is a thought well worth considering would you not agree all of these different thoughts are now being pondered in a variety of different science halls medical halls political halls for i tell you that the advances in these sciences have come have reached much further much faster than you have imagined now for your consideration then already you know that there are vast amount of seeds for instance being stored for your purposes in case of catastrophic aspects coming or visiting upon the earth that life may resurrect itself vast amount of books literary material and scientific facts are also being stored within vast computer spaces in very secure locations again in order to protect life and to resurrect life if necessary what if we take that a step further what if all of your thoughts for instance could also be stored well on a microchip for instance every thought that you have ever had every memory that you have ever had and any possibility that you have programmed for yourself to have in this life if all of that could also be stored then in something that today looks like a mechanism but tomorrow could look an awful lot like you well this is the future of your technology 
it is the future today and so it is well worth examining the world that you live in now and the world that you are constructing the world that you are building for tomorrow you see there are many different forms many different brands of cybernetics including what you term second order cybernetics which in essence allows a mind to construct a model of a mind well how would a mind do that the theory states that it cannot do it from the outside in that it must be done from the inside out in other words a thought must enter a thought in order to know it live it and then create it or save it a mind must then enter the mind in order to become it and become living mind living matter now you have what is then called organic chemistry or the ability of mind to create living mind or brain to be saved in this case then to save a mind creates the ability to save the human race so that it can become the next race or the next idea it is in this case the model of humanity that is being saved technologically and I tell you that these ideas are being explored now in very great ways the ability to create life or to save life has many simple very beautiful very humanitarian reasons for coming into being for instance the ability to create artificial limbs for returning soldiers who have not been so fortunate on the war front certainly your cultures your societies would wish to assist these individuals and to give them back the use of their limbs and to the degree that these can be incorporated as organically as possible so much the better well one of the ways to do that is to begin to give the brain mind the example or the idea that the artificial limb that it is being fitted with is in fact organically connected to its body you see if brain if your thoughts think that it is an artificial limb then it will not be accepted to the body however if the thoughts can be changed from the inside out so that the brain now thinks that artificial is organic then it will begin to receive that inorganic material and build organic material around you yes you may think this is idea is science fiction related but think for a moment those who create your science fiction where have they got the ideas from where has their mind invented from where does this creativity, this imagination or reimagineering, come from? So here I tell you that this is already in your now. It is already in your near future. And I will tell you that the experiments to date have gone relatively well, with very few setbacks, as a matter of fact. So already you have about you bodies beings that have artificial limbs that have been reconnected to them transplanted to them limbs that have come from others donors as you know being accepted by the body and so you have here a science that is born that is active that is necessary and creative to your future there are many different aspects of this future science to consider today 
because it is a young science still. There are young minds associated with it. You must first consider as well that as with many such projects, the funding comes from both private and public funds, as well as those that would in some way be distributed to military, to defense, you see? These funds, then, allow for experimental procedures and ideas. Later, these are then funneled to some of the medical trials and studies, and to the average or normal human population. For the most part, these projects are yet of closed door or behind door until there is more need for them or more acceptance for them. Certainly the military you might see has use for these as well. Certainly if humanity begins to need its young men's and women's nearer the home, and there are yet many different battles to be fought on other fronts in other countries, then here you have a science that will advance both the cause of the government or the country and satisfy those at home as well that their own families are not being sacrificed for the sake of a battle or a war. Now you must add to that then the thought that if battles rage then, who is it that is fighting then? Who or what is the battle, the war, or the fight? Is it a battle of machines then? Is it man against man? Machine against machine, mind against mind, or computer against computer? Is it simply a matter, then, of what or which one is programmed a little bit better or with a little bit more advanced directive, you see? It is not so much a matter, then, of military might, so much that it is a matter, then, of technological might that is needed at this time, and that is where much of this study is being taking place. So the concept of mind and what mind is and what mind wants to explore is taking place. There are in fact explorations into what the mind is capable of and how much of mind can be saved or transferred into a technological based system. This is also being studied. From a medical perspective, there are many advances that could take place here. For instance, humanity does not quite understand its body, its vehicle. However, mind does. If the mind can be studied, saved, and broken down into concepts and ideas that can be filed, well, these can then be changed by technology itself. For instance, a very simple thought, we can take longevity as a point of view. Longevity, thinking, how long is a human life span? 50, 75, 100 years. That can change based upon a simple, technologically organic advancement, a little tweak of the mind, and the body would begin to regenerate tissue needed that would regenerate, rejuvenate the body. It is an instruction given to the body. It is an instruction given to it what to excrete, what to create, what to transfer within itself. And it is possible then to extend the longevity of the human being. That would sound rather good. Your life now becomes not limited. You do not have to be concerned about how well to live life, how quickly or how long youth lasts, or when it will fade away. Well, 
let us put this thought together with an earlier thought. Imagine, then, that of all these advances in technology, the robotic nature, then, has also taken over many jobs. Not simply manufacturing jobs, then, but many other labor-intensive jobs and many others that are, well, almost too simple for the mind, so that certainly a computer program can adjust it. Now you have more of a population, because the population does not need to age or has longer longevity, and yet there are less labor-intensive jobs for it to operate. Now you need, then, to consider what does a human being do? What is the purpose of a human being? To create, to live, to be, to do for itself and for others. The question then becomes one, of overpopulation of the earth, as you might consider already. It becomes one of economies to drive the earth for what or for whom. And it becomes then a consideration as well what to do with the human body itself. Already, as you look about you and see your studies upon the earth, already indicate that humanity then, in the whole, country by country, has been gaining in density for the most part. You say it has been getting fatter, and much of this is attributed then to less movement of the bodies. Technology has made it so that you do not need to get up to change the channel on your television. You do not need to go to the library to study. You have a library at your fingertips. You have many other things at your fingertips so that your body need not be in motion to go, to do, to get, or to work. At the same time, humanity has been consuming more because it feels as if it needs more in terms of its own comfort or its own idea of what it needs. These ideas are still based on an older model, a model of where humanity was approximately one century ago. So it is time to update your thoughts, your ideas of what a human being is and what a human being does. For the most part, humanity would be able to sustain itself easily on, well, a 50% almost regimen. To be fair, it is more 47% less than what it consumes now, and it would be more fit in its health sense. It does not do this because it thinks of a model of itself in which its ability to work or to move the body exerted more effort, in essence burned more energy, more calories. As technological advances continue to evolve, the bodies will need to move even less whether it is to transport themselves from here to there, less of a commute, less of a walk from here to there, less motivation to move or exercise the body. This will begin to bring physiological changes in some of the bodies. Certain aspects, certain organs of the body will begin to atrophy and others will begin to enlarge somewhat. And you will begin to see true physiological changes in some bodies and, in fact, in the younger generations as they begin to offer themselves, for they are not born into the same model that most other generations have been born into. They require 
less energy to be expended from the body, and so they are able to redirect that energy into other thoughts, other formulas, other concepts. These next and new concepts will conceive of a new way of life. So here, technology and its advances now begin to feed life. Organic creates technology. Technology will then begin to feed or to fuel the next organic concept of life. Now, think upon this. As humanity truly prefers at times to reflect upon the past, even the ancient past, if this is true today, if it is becoming more true today, and perhaps even more than that tomorrow, could it be conceptually true, worth exploring the idea that in the long ago past, this also took place? Could it be that in humanity's concept of evolution, it could be added into the formula, another way of life to beget life, in which that which is artificial becomes organic, that which is organic eventually yields again to the artificial technology which invites the next way or wave to be and promotes the next cycle of evolution in this way. Here is the concept that I give to you. I put it before you for your mind to consider in what way life regenerates life. In what way life begins to create life again and anew. As we continue to explore the subject then, I will give to you other aspects in which organic technology begins to serve you. If it is that humanity becomes concerned over its food supply, for instance, it will begin to save certain foods in order to grow them in environments that are more protected than they are now. This would mean indoor environments, even underground environments, in very protected places in which they are nurtured by life itself. In other words, very secure, indoor, organic gardens could be artificially created in order to grow or preserve food and the future of humanity's food supply. This that I say to you, imagine that as I put to you certain possibilities for you to consider, please forgive that I offer them to you as future possibilities when I say to you that they are already currently established foundations already taking place at least in limited concepts, by several countries already. It is the future today that is our topic, and I bring it to you rather gently, because for some these are rather jarring ideas. Others will be exhilarated by the notion and will say, well, finally. And because it will touch you in the ways that it does, in some ways feeling very complementary to your nature, and in some small ways a little bit threatening as well. You see, there is a part of humanity that has always been concerned with its extinction and how that might come about. For instance, it is not lost on humanity that Atlantis, a great and thriving race, much more than just a continent, but an entire civilization, yielded and succumbed and became extinct. 
It is not lost on humanity that the dinosaurs of long ago, quickly, when their point was no longer necessary upon the earth, also yielded and became extinct. It is not lost on humanity, the destruction, that holocaust, cataclysm, and other catastrophes bring about an extinction as well. So the purpose of life must be preserved after all. And something within each being does this or wishes to do so. It preserves life for its next generation. It processes those things that are of value and hands them to the next generation. And so now is one of those times. It is a time in which the next generations are not only next, they are also new. It is indeed the foundation of a new age that is now being formed. And while you are looking for the golden umbrella, the golden parachute, or the golden rays of sunlight to wash over you, it is well to see what is the ground beneath you doing as well. How is the ground beneath you sustaining you? How is the life that supports your walk upon the earth complementing you what you are what you wish i bring these topics then for your consideration so that it will stretch a little bit the corridors of the mind a little bit the fabric of your thoughts think to yourself now that there are natural thoughts artificial thoughts and even synthetic Synthetic thoughts. Synthetic thoughts are those that are placed there, somehow out of nothingness, if you like, out of cyberspace. Cyberspace does not necessarily know the difference between a thought that you have had organically by processing many such memories, or one that was simply placed there, one that was simply inserted there. At this change of the age, then, that is what is taking place as well. Synthetic thoughts, just as synthetic material, like an overlay on the organic, becomes something else. There are, again, many positives to this, I tell you. To take a synthetic thought that life is everlasting and have it gently overlay one that fears that it will end tomorrow, and inserting that into a reality, perhaps you begin to see then that it has good reason, good purpose. Many of those who are now being born into and upon the earth have already arrived with synthetic thoughts, in other words, those that did not come generation by generation heredity. They are thoughts that are within a new being, a new structure, a new concept, a new idea. And such is the privilege of those who receive them in order to protect life, in order to proliferate life, and in order to extend it even beyond the earth. Remember, earlier we posed a question. What is it that a humanity will do when it no longer needs to labor, either for its food, or for its work, or for a significant paycheck? What will you do with your day? Well, the first thought says, oh, I will finally be able to relax. Finally will come a day where I do not need to work so hard or worry or be concerned so much that everything is being taken care of. I will finally move beyond survival. 
Yes. Agreed. You will move beyond the necessity of thinking of your everyday survival being tied to what you labor for or work for or earn. And after you have relaxed and then vacationed and then slept and then rested and then satiated yourself in every possible way, what will you want to do next? If you have robotic nature beings accommodating your needs, what will you want to do next? It is a thought worth considering, because for those that do not consider it and do not plan for their evolution, they will fall to their extinction. See? There are many different ways that beings become extinct. It is not always because they are hunted down to extinction. Some of them simply lose their purpose for being. Their purpose for being is what becomes extinct. Being is not doing. Doing is not being. But there is a relationship between the human being and what it does. That is why now it is important for you to begin to conceive of yourself as a human being, as I have said, not a human doing. Begin to imagine great concepts for yourself. Begin to imagine, imagineer, engineer within yourself, whether they are organic or synthetic thoughts that include all possibilities for being. Imagine humanity reaching quickly for the moon, reaching quickly for other enterprises and explorations and discoveries. Begin to imagine life in its full creative sense. Discovering further sciences, new uses for its biology. Wondrous concepts for the mind to explore and to delve into and to create. Because I tell you that mind is that. Mind is not infinite, but nearly infinite. Begin to imagine the next dimension the fourth-dimensional idea, the bridge to the fifth-dimensional experience. Begin to conceive a lighter thought, a lighter way to be, a greater reason to serve the self and the self-full. Begin to solve the problems of humanity because they are solvable so that the next and the new, then, becomes very, very possible. You see, in essence, if you do not, the inorganic matter, or what you have programmed to solve a problem, can and will solve it. That is rather strange, do you not think, that you can program a mind to solve a problem, but your mind, even if it is the one that has programmed the other mind, cannot solve, cannot find the same solution. Why is that? Well, the programmed mind has been programmed to solve, meaning that is its directive, and so it will. It has been programmed to provide a certain function, to succeed at that function. So it does. Your mind, on the other hand, thinks of certain problems and wonders can they be solvable in your lifetime, in your future, within your generational abilities, within the funds that are allotted to you. There is uncertainty in this. Technology does not have that uncertainty. It yields, but only to the next model of technology. It is a futuristic concept that I have brought to you, 
this day. It is one that challenges a bit, pushes a bit. You may find yourself having a slight distaste for the topic, just for the moment. It seems to bypass the heart, in some way bypass what Gaia would say in love's compassion for humanity. But, oh no, sweet ones, it is in fact because I hold humanity so dear, so compassionately dear, that I would address you this way, that I would address you and your fine mind, your ability to conceive. Look to the skies. See how far they reach. Look to the stars. See how they pose themselves to you brilliantly each night. In the same way, I offer to you new ideas for you to consider each and every day. Give to yourself an assignment. Conceive, have a concept every day. Something that is impossible that on that day you begin to think that for whatever reason today it seems well possible. If yesterday it seemed as if only war was possible, well, today, peace is indeed possible. Today the solution is peace. Tomorrow there will be a different solution. Every day allow yourself to conceive of a thought that you did not have on the day prior. Awaken new possibilities, new thoughts, new pathways within your very mind and you will begin to see that the world remakes itself by these ideas. Begin to think for yourself not only that you are doing a good job, looking for a better job or hoping for the next career, but begin to conceive that the mind that you have capable of so many things is also creating a new life around you. Allow your mind to begin to work around the older thoughts, the older concepts, taking new ways, new pathways to new thoughts. If you continue to rehearse only the older thoughts, you will sit with them, keeping each other company in the rocking chairs of time, if you like. It is Gaia's way to prompt you to promote you, to ignite a fire beneath you, to awaken the greater light within you, to see both organically, synthetically, and in every other way. Let there be then now a leap into the new, a new concept. Now, as we return to the idea then, of organic life or organic compounds, organic chemistry. You see, these are the ones that form many of the ideas for your drug, for your plastic, for all that earthly life possesses, for your foods, for other chemical compounds. These are the ones that are creating then the new basis for life or for a different life. You are creating then new systems of thought, new ideas from which to grow your organisms. Out of synthetic ideas will be grown synthetic parts, and these will also then be in time indistinguishable from those that you know now. It is a time for you to recognize what the future brings to you as well. Again, I tell you that the future brings to you more technology, cars, automobiles that can easily drive themselves, particularly at your rush hours when you and your senses are less able to do as good a job, so there will be less accidents on the road, 
Well, that is certainly a plus, one that you can look forward to. You can look to your personal security in the form of computer synthetic environment as well, so that even as you dress yourself or secure your home, it will alert you or alert others if any danger prevails, because your home will be synthetically organized, however, according to your codes, your own code of life, your own perimeters. You will have enhanced abilities then in your own body, your own ability to know and to be associated with all of those things that are yours. Protective systems, protecting your health, protecting your securities, protecting your idea of life, programmed into your very being. While you think that may not be particularly attractive, the next generations are already approving of that, constructing that as a model, and it will be available in the very near future. The future today is the concept that I bring to you. Tomorrow today, the ability to choose your life, to know your life, to be fully aware in your life, this is the model that I bring to you today. In the future, in the near future, you will have then family members that are also somewhat synthetic, if you like. For you will have those that are assistants to you that come about in ways that are both organic and inorganic, making your life a little bit simpler. Again, earlier we also posed the question, it is well when a robot looks like a robot. What if the robot looks like you? What if the robot looks human enough, fluid enough? What if, in fact, it begins to have feelings? What if it can be programmed to feel as you do? In the beginning only to interpret your feelings or your needs. This is the future that you are coming to. And that future is nearly your tomorrow. If this cyborg being programmed, for instance, to go to war so that humanity will not need to do so, well, what if it has feelings now? Can you still send it to war? And what if its feelings begin to evolve such so that it also does not wish to war or battle because it does no longer see the reason for it? Here is another concept for you to consider. The concepts that I offer you here are not new. Perhaps you have thought about them for yourself. If you have not, I tell you that behind certain closed doors and under certain conditions, these are being explored, discovered, thought for, and in some ways, well, anticipated. There are those whose job it is to anticipate future events and to plan for them. Some of those can be anticipated, particularly when it is technology that we speak of. And yet, as always, I must tell you that the purpose of life is life. And life will always, always bring to you a certain matter of surprises. Surprises because humanity, wise as it is in its discoveries and its curiosities, has not yet been able to leap into the future far enough to look back upon itself. 
it looks to the future and it can decode this to some degree but it cannot make such a leap into the future that it could then turn about and face itself that is what future races will begin to do now to add one more dimension to this topic well we could not quite leave it without thinking at least of what a truly advanced race could do or would bring or would offer to a humanity so here i tell you then that as part of the laboratories there are those that are indeed working with advanced beings this i tell you of all that i have brought to you is the largest blessing that can be offered for those that are indeed working cohesively in companionship with those of the older or present earth model they are bringing to you as they have before the ways and the means by which to continue life by which to advance it by which to further it by which to enhance it by which to support it earlier we took a backward glance at other civilizations such as atlantis and yes it fell and yes it crumbled eventually but not before it passed on to other fledgling beings and civilization all of the keys and codes by which to further life and promote life where did this come from where did these abilities come from the memories the cellular memories social memories or advanced directives where did they come from if not from a brotherhood that has always been and always will be humanity has companions whether they are seen or not elder brothers cousins companions from the stars you may give them what names you like including extraterrestrials or poor name for such a confluence of assistance and so these now as well in current time in now time in your now near future you will have models then by which to build and by which to know humanity is not alone upon the earth never has it been and it is not likely that it will continue to be alone the solar system is your family you know the other planets in the solar system are the earth's family making the beings from other planets your family as well do not then discount what you would think of as artificial or advanced it is not as foreign as you think it is more rooted in your past than you can remember it is more a part of your future than you currently suspect begin to see brotherhood then not only in man and machine but in organic versus inorganic do not let your older thoughts and mind resist the new simply because the memories the social memory complex within you does not remember this i bring these thoughts to you purposefully to jog out of your past your future to recycle your thoughts to ignite a new path for you to take in a subject that we will consider from time to time again you are indeed technological as well as artificial beings you are both this and that here and there then and now and perhaps then until tomorrow brings us together again i leave you with a few perplexing concepts to sort out even as i will bring to you 
more details in future moments. I bid you good day.